You played at the inauguration of President Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. Take me back to that that night when he sworn in. It was a big night in Washington. Oh, well, first of all, I took my mother and dad, okay? And they were so out of place that daddy just was ready to get the hell out of there. And, uh, you know, working in the middle all his life, he wasn't comfortable. My mother was a little bit overwhelmed. The comfortable part about it was the playing. Then he come and stopped in for a minute because there's seven balls going on, you know? And uh, he generously gave us more time that I heard than he did with the other groups that had come to show up. And uh, he, he seemed like a nice enough guy. Plus he did come and come around at certain periods of time later and uh, after the presidency and uh, just said hello. That's pretty cool. Well, I do want to talk about the music. Tell me as briefly as you can the story behind Heard It in a Love Song. Toy Caldwell was a master songwriter and player. And Toy would come to me and he'd say, write this down real quick. I ain't never been with a woman long enough for my boots to get old. I would never think that way. And then I, that part of Can't Be Wrong, I heard it in a love song, Can't Be Wrong. He wrote that first part. But the second part, I wanted to make sure that he knew that I was doing it the right way. So I went, we had to overdub all of that. Can't be wrong. You know, and I mean, it just, it just flared from there. And then it he started writing all kinds there. of lyrics. What about Can't You See? First of all, Toy gave it to me to sing. I said, nope. I can't sing that. I said, man, you just sang it really good. I said, please don't not sing it. So he didn't, we didn't do it for a couple of weeks, if, as well as I remember. And then Toy said, yep, I'm going to give it a try. And he gave it a try. And the audience, it just blew the audience away. It was this outstanding song, outstanding song. And it's still on, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a big song everywhere because of that. It's, it's going to take a freight train, you know, all these different kind of things like that that we weren't exposed to. So how did he come up with this cowboy boot thing? Or how did he come up with, can't you see what that woman's been doing to me when nobody's broke his heart? You know, if you don't have a broken heart, why would you sing, can't you see? So Toy was, he was, he was a songwriting, songwriter's dream. I never should have started loving you. Yeah. That's a different story. And I wrote that. We were sitting out on the bus and I started writing writing a song. And I didn't finish it till later. And there's I was close to being married, okay? And I was riding down the road in my pickup truck and I had an old fifty five Chevrolet. It, we called it the Peach Orchard truck because the guy never drove it off the Peach Orchard. And I, I bought it at a steel and uh, and put some wheels on it and made it look good. And driving down the road, and she's with me, and I said, there's there's something in your eyes that reminds me of all the loves I've left behind me. It looks on your face as they tell me that I should have never started loving you. That meant I was afraid to start loving somebody because I didn't want my love just to fall out there for anybody. That's where that song came from. It written on the back of a Burger King bag. Wow. So I was a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Fire on the Mountain. Tell me about Fire on the Mountain. George McCorkle come up, called me up, and we were off the road. And George, that was George's song. And he called me up. He said, uh, you know, we, we had hit all the Western stores. There went a lot of rest, Western stores around a long time ago. So we had hit all those, and that was our new way to dress, you know, big cowboy hats and stuff. You go back and look at all the old stuff. And uh, we thought that was the coolest thing in the world. We, so we stopped at every one of them and bought something. And George called me up after we got back home. He says, he said, you don't think I'm making fun of anything, do you? He says, I want you to listen to the lyrics. Uh, took my family away from our Carolina home. Had dreams about the West and started to roam. Six long months on a dust-covered trail. They say heaven's at the end, so far it's been hell. I, I said, how's that going to hurt anybody's feelings? I said, that's too cool. And then he took it to the band, and the band finished it, and there we are. There have been a lot of people come and go from the band over the years, over a long period of time. I'm interested, how do you manage to keep the cohesion of the band, which is very important, 
And how do you establish rapport within the band? when, I wouldn't say it's constantly changing, but there's fairly regular turnover of personnel. How do you do that? I think it's more, uh, it's been probably 500 people, okay? It's, and, and that's rough. Not within the band, but within the band and crew, because yeah. I love all the crew and all the, I, I, I loved them all. But that is a lesson that I learned. If you got somebody that's in, within your group or organization that is causing you pain and to be, they're being a pain in the ass, okay? You want to fix that. And the only way to fix it is to let them know that they're not gonna have a place there anymore if they can't be a part of our excitement going down the road. Now this runs counter to you wanting to be a pleaser. You said you wanted to please people. Right, right. But what you're telling me, I'll make sure I understand it, when it comes to the band's business, mm -hmm. if there's trouble within the band, one person is causing difficulty, then you have to be tough. I, I don't think it's being tough. I think it's keeping touch with the people. The people are telling me that this band's got to keep going. It's not me telling me that I want to keep going and I don't want to give up. But there's people out there, why would a 17 or a 15 year old kid come up and tell me at, and, and this answers part of this question, 15 year old kid come up and say, uh, I'd like to have your autograph. And uh, I'd say, well, how do you know about the band? And she says, my mother used to take me back and forth to school and she would strap me in that car seat and I'd have to sit there and listen to her play Marshall Tucker all the time. So I wanted to come and find out what this was all about. 